Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Michael for Spirit Comics. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please do subscribe and smash that bell like she hulk so you'll be notified each time there's a new upload. If you do enjoy this video, please do like it and share it with others so they can enjoy it as well. And don't forget to leave your comments. This is my review of Dazzler X Song number one. It's a one shot written by Magdalene Visaggio. Artist is Laura Braga and color artist Rachel Rosenberg. Now, this came out back in June, and that's important for a reason. I'll tell you why a little bit later. I want I enjoyed this story when it came out, and I wanted to tell the writer Magdalene Visaggio that I enjoyed it, but I couldn't because when I looked her up on Twitter. I found out that I was blocked by this writer who I'd never spoken to before. Anyways, let's get into the story. Now it opens up in the home of this inhuman by the name of Nora, and she's getting prepared for a concert featuring Lightbringer with the snicks, which that's the sound that Wolverine's adamantium claws make when they come out from his hand. Now below that you see music for the Meta slash Mutant Re Re Revolution, I'm guessing, or Re Revolt. Now the strange thing about that to me is the word Meta is something I have not seen used in Marvel Comics. However, I have seen it used in DC Comics. So I'm wondering why they used Meta there. And plus, you know, that's not, it's not, this is the only time it's used in this entire story. So anyway, Nora's friend tells her, you know, come on already. She says, I can't find my wallet, but she's not looking for a wallet. In fact, she's putting on her lipstick. And then I'm paneling across. There's Dazzler with her ruddy by the name of Farley. You know getting the stuff out of the van or so they can set up for the concert then down the page Nora says that she found her her wallet but she's afraid that she might lose control of her powers and her friend Z there in the green said that it's been a couple of months since her powers went you know bonkers out of control she said that's what she keeps telling herself, but she wants to bolt before her parents get home. So apparently, Nora has a problem with her parents, but that isn't really divulged in this story. After all, it's only a one shot. And the narration begins from Dazzler saying it's easy to get. Def defensive and here's someone I'm not can't remember if it's a mutant or probably an inhuman getting ready for the same concert there's Dazzler testing out her equipment she, she, she says in the narration you fight tooth and nail for some little bit of space you settle and you get comfortable and then and the panel over shows Nora and Z on the train to the to the concert. Now, if you'll notice, Nora looks really unhappy. She looks sad, while Z is full. She's she's, she's smiling. Seems to be full of life. She said, "So, how thrilled are your folks with you these days?" And Nora says. I should just move out already. My being inhuman on top of everything else, and they just lose all ability to, to cope. Well, you have to wonder what the everything else is. And you have also, you know, the ability to, to ability to, to, to cope. Well, the parents probably came from a different generation than you, my pink, my purple-haired friend. <laughs> 
if there had to be a a villain of, of this story, I would say it's well, I'll say who who I think it is later. And and then you know Dazzler's testing out the equipment. Something new arrives. So there's outside the theater. It's called the hologram, featuring the Lightbringer. Then Lightbringer is not spelled with an E, which I thought it was. And there, and Z says, "Be cool tonight, okay?" And this is how I think Nora responds. I'm always cool. And Z would say. You know what I mean. That's how I think their exchange went. Then they're inside the club, the theater there, and these two in the back, you know, this this uh, person says, piece of trash, inhumans. He didn't even say it with an exclamation mark. I mean, he didn't even say it with real any real anger. It was just a snide rem It was just a snide remark. But Nora has to respond, saying, Bite me. And you can see her friend Z just giving her the evil eye, like, Why in the world did you have to do that? So they got their tickets. And Z says, Do you have to do stuff like that? You'll just provoke them. And purple haired Nora. Who looks like a fashion experiment gone wrong says it's not my job to provoke them it's not theirs not to be garbage well yes it is your job Nora because if you say stuff like that nine times out of ten the result will be someone's going to be provoked and so you are causing the garbage so therefore you are at fault. You're the bad guy. And so the bad guy says, and besides, tonight, it's all about empowerment. Mutant, inhuman, or whatever. Then she sees Dazzler up on stage saying, this is mutant pride in human solidarity. We may be the, the world's genetic pariahs, but we aren't finished yet. Now, remember when I said this came out in June, and that was important. June was Gay Pride Month, and that's celebrated by people who are gay and transgender. Now, if you read the same spell, the same bubble right here, speech bubble, and replace mutant with the word gay and the word inhuman with transgender, it reads like this. As, as follows. This is gay pride, transgender solidarity. We may be the world's genetic prize, but we aren't finished yet. Now, Magdalene Visaggio, who I think is transgender, is basically calling gay people and those who are transgender genetic pariahs. See, she's using the story to convey a certain theme, a certain narrative, if you will. And then, down here, Nora, who I'm guessing is probably gay, because, you know, as she mentioned a few panels back, the, about, you know, er, about, uh, that there's other things that her parents were annoyed about. I feel in control. My light bursts aren't flaring out wildly. They're going right where I want. Well, yes, they are flaring out wildly. That means you want them to flare out wildly. Now, here we have Dazzler talking again, and she's not narrating. She's talking to someone, and you can see all the kids dancing there in the club, in the theater. And some of them are even flying, as you can see there on the left. 
And it's just, it was just so positive, you know? All these kids out there being themselves, letting their muty flag fly. Now that sounds like letting their gay flag fly to me. But hey, you know, I'm just one person. I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong on that. So who's Dazzler speaking to? Ah, it's Colossus from the X-Men. He says, "Duh, I know this feeling well. It's when we're trying. It's what we're trying to do with the X-Men again to get past all the drama and pain and do something good." And she says, "What are you even doing here, Peter? I think I, I think I pronounced that close to correct. Peter. It's Russian. I'm not hiding, but I haven't exactly advertised that Lightbringers." lead singer is a certain former one hit wonder and then it looks like Dazzler is started to flirt with Colossus because look at those eyes look at him it's like oh Colossus I wish you would just kiss kiss me ravage me I mean that's what I'm that's what I'm reading into it. And uh, and it's he says uh, it's hard to hide from Cerebro. You know that's the computing that that's the computer that finds mutants, those who are living anyway. And that uh, he heard that she left the group called A Force, which was a comic book that didn't last very long before it was cancelled a year or so ago and I want you to notice something this is Colossus look at that strong jawline okay look at the tension there up in, in, up in the forehead okay now keep that in mind and uh, she, she still looks like she's flirting with him. And then he sees something very strange in her, in her van. He says, hey, so weird question. Is that Milnor in the trunk of your car? She says, hey, no, it was a friend's long story. Don't worry about it. And he says, I can't blame any of us for having weird secrets Dazzler and she says I'm not really using that name right now Peter stick to Allison so I doubt you just came here to chat that's another thing about people like us everything we do has to be fraught with meaning and he said you got me figured you got me I figured with everything settling down with the X-Men Maybe you might want to come back. We've been rebuilding, you know. Now look at Colossus this time. A few, you know, a few panels ago, you saw his strong jawline, and you saw the tension in his forehead. Now it looks like he's literally five years younger or more. I mean, eh. The, there's no more tension in his forehead because Colossus is always a very serious person. I rarely read him as joking or you know, or anything. So this the, the, this drawing of him right here is just kind of weird because it does doesn't look like him at all. Anyway. She said, he, she said that the X-Men were a failed, uh, were a rebound from a failed pop music debut. And you can see that Dazzler is flirting with him because I believe when a girl runs her hands through her hair like that while talking to a guy, that could possibly mean that she's either infatuated with him 
or trying to flirt with him. And he says, listen, if you change your mind, I just want to visit. And she hugs him and promises that she will. Now, next we see the two girls outside of the club. And Nora is acting very standoffish, like the jerk she is. Z, I told you, I don't wanna. And Z says, yes, you do. You spent the whole show saying you wanted to meet the band, so that's what we're doing. But what if they hate me? Her friend Z seems to be the logical one. And Nora seems to be the emotional one. Who just... You know, goes from moment to moment by her um, her feelings, her emotions. And Z says, did you or did you not want to tell them how much it meant to you to have a non-baseline band out here kicking butt? I mean, yeah, musicians love hearing how great they are. This is going to be awesome. Less awesome than you think. Uh, well, who's this? I believe that's the dude who was uh, getting ready for the show, you know, a few pages ago. Now, these are mutants. Oh, crap. Hey, Inhuman. How about you stay the hell away from mutant pride, Eugene Reject? What, you gonna make her, you and your mutant action dance troupe? This is just hilarious to me because every time that I I see mutants in Marvel Comics, they do not look like a, they're standing out as a sore thumb would. Because look at the one on the left. He looks like a blue popsicle in the Middle guy looks like a uh, like like a living corpse, and the uh, one on the right, he looks like brown leather. <laughs> he says mockery is the refuge of the weak-minded. Mutant action is so much more. How's about we show you? So this is kind of carried over from the. Inhumans versus X-Men storyline that came out almost two years ago, it seems. And Dazzler, hearing all this, zaps him in the back with her special light. If you're gonna start something, you better be ready to finish it. Listen, everyone's just trying to have a good time tonight everyone no some of them are actually trying to be be jerks like that Nora no gene tests for admission no anti inhuman nonsense you get in the way of that and believe me the only person having a good time will be me so maybe you make like you saying and bolt I'm hilarious. I don't even get that, you Usain. So, who the heck are these jokers? That was amazing! And she says, they're called Mutant Action. This really nasty, anti-inhuman, basically A Street Gang nonsense. Dang, I can't say that I'm surprised, though. This has been coming. You kids gonna be okay? So, she, she admits... That the Inhumans had this coming. And. You know. These two don't even react to that. But this whole notion here that Norris is. But you should know something. They're pretty militant about trying to keep Inhumans out of mutant spaces. Mutant spaces? Hello. 
every, they'll be at every one of your shows. Oh, so, okay, mutants are going to go to see her perform, and she's a mutant. Of course, Dazzler is like people today who just want good comics. They want comic books without the drama, without the politicizing, without the, you know, identity politics, the gender politics. She just wants people to enjoy music together, mutant and inhuman. But that's not what happens. Because this is her next show. You know, she notices that the, the this mutant action group, they show up. But uh, when they continue, she, they can they continued performing. More of them would show up, and then this place almost seems like a church building in a way, because as you can as you can see that that platform there's there's a podium right there. This literally looks like a, a church, uh, uh, like a like a church. So I don't know why that is, but uh, or if anybody else knows, but that is definitely a podium there on the left, and there's also one on the right. Churches are the only places that I've found podiums, and well, that there's only. There, of course, at, you know, election uh, rallies, but I don't go to those. She says, this is yours, this is ours, mutant, inhuman, we are rocking, dancing, and loving together. And as you can see, everybody is calm as can be. So, these are, in my, in my estimation, churchgoers who perhaps happen to be mutants and inhumans. But she notices that the mutant action group still can't, still comes. And this little boy comes up to her and says, I just want to tell you it's so great what you're doing. It means so much to all of us. And she says, in a, in a kind of dry tone, thanks so much. That's why I'm here. Well, maybe not a dry tone, but, you know, in a less enthusiastic tone. It's why I'm here, too. And another one of those weirdo mutants that you've never seen before. You pe people are sick. You know that treating inhumans like they're us. Nobody's bringing Thor or the Hulk here. Why? Because they're just super-powered super humans. And humans are just humans. They don't get to colonize our oppression. So, she gets irritated. Alright, dude. Get that nasty stuff out of my face before I blast you with so much light your grandkids will be blind. Yeah, you said that. What'd he do? So now she's talking to her roadie. And she says he tried to he tried to be all blah 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 in human scum and security squirted him out. He says, I'm surprised you didn't blast him. Yeah. It was fine, I didn't want to escalate. Not at that show. Not at that show, because it was in a church it was in a church. I recognize that as a type of uh, a t a type of uh, what was it called? Oh and I uh, I know there's a specific name for it. not recreation room, but she doesn't want didn't want it at that show or any other. She just, she, she says I'm not a superhero anymore. I just want to make music, and don't I don't understand why nobody will just let me. And you know, in a sense, that's what people 
are trying to do today. They want good comic books. And people from the big two, DC Comics and Marvel Comics, keep ham fisting their own rhetoric down and will not let will, won't let people make their own comic book, comic books because they don't stick to the same narrative of the big two. So even though Magdalene Visaggio probably did not realize it and probably did not intend to put a dare I say pro comic gate message in here that's what she did a little bit probably because nobody ever quits being a superhero for good hell I'm in I'm in your band and even I figure you'll be wearing spandex again eventually <laughs> and she says uh, I'm not even a little surprised to see this kind of hate festering in the mutant community People get desperate. Inhumans outnumber us now, and though and up until they stop the Terrigen Mist, more are cropping up every day, and we're still coming back from the brink of extinction. So, in one ma one manner of speaking, you can not blame the mutants because the humans hate them, Inhumans hate them. You know, they can't turn anywhere but their own community, mutants. Now this it was sort of telling, but as long as they don't start anything, I'm going to keep my focus where it matters. And her ruddy, by the name of Farley, says, getting into arguments on Twitter, the music, Farley, the music. <laughs> because from what I've heard, you know, the bit representatives of the big two do get into arguments with people, particularly customers, quite often. From what I've heard, anyway. And now they arrive at another show. And Farley says, what you were saying about escalation? No admittance for inhumans. That's the same guy from a few pages ago. This isn't your show. This isn't, that's a, you know, bad guy, Nora. It is now smack, you know, right across the face. Which, she had that coming. Because she's not security. She's just another atten attendee at that show. And her friend Z says, this isn't worth it. We can just leave. She says, no, I'm not going to back down. They don't get to do this. So, it's, like I said before, Z is the intelligent one. She is the one who uses ra ra her rationale. And Nora is the emotional one. And all of a sudden, Nora... realizes her light burst fizzle and he says you know what this is sweetheart it's a power dampener legal too it prevents genetic rejects like you from using your powers it's specially tuned to the inhuman gene mutants don't need you and we don't want you you're an infestation to be dealt with now I'll agree with him to the point where she is just a jerk. I mean, really, she is not a great character. I like Z better because she's the intelligent one. A little black eye never stopped me from dancing. Oh, yeah, how about. Excuse me, Chief. It's Dazzler again. Where? Now that's kind of nice. But he hates it because 
you're one of us. What happened to solidarity? Well, to be fair, at the beginning of the story, she said inhuman solidarity, which means, you know, inhumans and mutants together as one. Oh, sweetie, a little, your little cheapo gang of boys don't get solidarity. But do you know what? You do get a gourmet, all-you-can-eat knuckle sandwich buffet. Clever. Calling us bullies just because we want mutants to be safe. But this isn't going to work like that. You don't get to tell us. We can fight for what's left of mutant kind. She says, she says cripes. Okay, guys, this is going to sound weird, but I need you two to start singing. Now, this is weird. Singing? Singing what? And I love this panel of Z. Because it makes her look just beautiful. Like her eyes are just sh shimmering. Her her hair is shimmering as well. It's beautiful. Doesn't matter as long as it's loud. And so Dazzler, a mutant, is standing with Nora an inhuman and I think they're singing probably one of her songs and all of a sudden whoosh she she, does, she lights up the place with her own powers this isn't over Gene Trader Oh, it isn't? Without your little dampener. Let's see how much you want to face a crowd of very angry and humans with their powers fully intact. What? Well, I don't... And she puts her heel to his head. Okay, listen, I've been trying to ignore you, but that's not an option. So let me tell you this. If you so much as look at anybody funny, I will unleash every ounce of mutant power I possess onto your bigoted little butts. So that's to in real life that would be a gay person telling a gay person that they're gonna fight. Because mutants are symbolic of gay people in this story. See so, so take this advice to heart. Sweet lord. If you show up anywhere and try to start something, I know, we'll all know, and you don't mess with my band. So that's very cheesy, because she's calling everybody there her band. What's up, Brooklyn? You guys charged up? You guys ready for it? I mean, now she's just, you know, it's, 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 now it's just cheesy and funny. And then, you know, that's the third concert after the first one, I believe. And guess who stuck around? I mean, I don't know how. I don't know how many. How I don't know how long that was. Maybe six hours or so, or two days. I'm not sure. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense to me because Dazzler didn't change her clothes and she did three concerts, three or four concerts and that that would, that would technically take uh, con a, a, a con each concert probably an hour each or an hour 15 minutes and time to go from one place to another so that had to take the, the most at least six hours and he sticks around this is Pietro Colossus and he said that wasn't quite what you were saying last week yeah it's definitely been some week so it's not just hours she says it's definitely been some week so the entire week, she wears the same clothes, doesn't shower once. She must have really stunk by that, by that time. 
but Colossus it looks like he went home and changed his clothes a little bit does this mean does that mean you'll reconsider you'll always have a home with the X-Men she says I mean maybe it's been a while but this last week you know I've been doing that whole fighting for a better world thing felt good here take this if you're feeling up to it give us a call and then what she says it's just it's just corny and cheesy holy jeez you guys still have these this isn't a Saturday morning cartoon dude can't we just text like on a phone of course that's in reference to the X-Men animated series from the 90s hey some of us still play the classic classics he says and I like that. And gives her a nice hug. Then she starts narrating again and says, It's weird. I've spent half my life trying to figure out what on earth I was supposed to do with myself. Everyone always said people with powers were supposed to become heroes. I resented that. I didn't want my future mapped out for me. But it's true. We have to be each other's heroes. We have to stand together because we will always stand apart. And that is that. And that's the end of the story. So, the, I, I enjoy it in some places and in other places. I saw the messages that were being suggested. So I still enjoy the story, re regardless of the theme, because it it's, it's still good in my in my opinion. The art was well, was nice. It wasn't too dark. It wasn't too bright. It was sort of middle of the road, a good compromise. And, you know, I can enjoy a story even if the theme the themes are very blatant and when I say that I'm talking about social justice stories sometimes I I can still enjoy them even though that they're very strong and some people will take stories like that and just rip them rip them apart or you know rip up the book I don't you know but that's a topic for a different video I guess I I enjoyed this story and I'm glad to see Dazzler Dazzler return to the X-Men thank you for stopping by my channel I'm Michael for Spirit Comics please do subscribe if you're new to my channel and don't forget to smash that notification bell like She-Hulk so you don't miss any new uploads. Also, please like and share this video with others so they can enjoy it as well. Don't forget to comment. Till next time, true readers.